grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There once was a king, according to this story, who spent all of his time sitting on his throne, hearing requests from people in his kingdom, and then dispensing some sense of justice. And each of those days, one person in particular, a holy man, dressed like a beggar, each day would approach that king and without saying a word would offer the king a piece of very ripe fruit. And each day the king would accept the present from the beggar and without a thought would hand that piece of fruit to the treasurer who stood behind the throne. And each day the beggar would then silently vanish into the crowd. That very same sequence happened day after day after day, year after year after year. And then one day, many years after it all started, something different happened. On this particular day, as the beggar was again offering his daily gift, this time the king dropped that piece of fruit. And when he dropped it, the fruit broke open. And when the fruit broke open, a precious jewel popped out and fell onto the floor. Well, this amazed the king, of course, and so he asked the treasurer, he says, he said, what's become of all this other fruit that this, this beggar has been giving me each and every day for all these years? But the treasurer had no real answer to that important question because over the years he had simply taken that piece of fruit given to him by the king and simply thrown it through a window into, into the treasure house. So now hearing this question from the king, the treasurer runs into the vault of the treasure house. He opens the door and hurries the area beneath that window, and there amidst this large pile of old, decayed fruit, there amidst, amidst what appeared to be nothing worth saving, simply worthless and valueless things, there amidst all those things lay a whole pile of precious gems. Well, that in many ways is probably everyone's nightmare. It's the nightmare of every parent seeking the best for their son or daughter. It's the nightmare of every son or daughter seeking the best for an aging parent. It's the nightmare of every working person seeking to make the right decisions about his or her future employment and their career. It's the nightmare of every person who's wrestled with any important decision about any area of life. It's the nightmare of every member of a congregation and every pastor and every church council and every committee member who has been seeking to make the right decisions about their, their congregation's future. The nightmare is to study things, to evaluate things, to sort out all the pros and cons, to balance all the competing interests, to pray for wisdom and guidance, to eventually believe that a, a proper and right choice or decision has been made, but to look back later with the insight of hindsight and to later realize that they've been missing something important all along. To later conclude that they've been so focused on the forest that they missed the trees or to find that they've been so focused on the trees that they missed the forest. Now it's certainly possible that we can find ourselves in those positions for a variety of reasons. Sometimes we can find ourselves in those positions because perhaps we've been a little reckless or a, real, a little foolhardy in what we've said or done and feeling as though we, we really didn't care what happened and so we in fact acted that way. Or maybe we find ourselves in those positions because we've made choices and decisions that were influenced by some anger or jealousy or bitterness or some other emotion. All that's possible, but it's also possible that those things happen to us just because none of us are perfect. Those things happen to us just in the very nature of life in our lives, and that all brings us to today's gospel. Today's 
gospel, Jesus was concerned about hearts. He said this, quoting from Isaiah, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts, Jesus said, their hearts are far from me. He said that because Jesus was and still is most concerned about hearts, most concerned about our hearts because of how complicated things have always been for people, because of how complicated things can still be for us. Here's how complicated things can be. On the one hand, in today's second reading, James says that we are to be doers and not hearers only. Puts great emphasis on the doing. Yet on the other hand, our friend St. Paul writes things about being saved by grace and not because of things that we do. On the one hand, Jesus seems to, to take a swipe at the Pharisees in today's gospel for, for getting hung up on tradition. And yet on the other hand, Jesus himself observed the traditions of his own Jewish faith. And Jesus himself created new traditions such as the one that we will celebrate today, the Sacrament of Holy Communion. So on the one hand, we try to make careful, thoughtful, reasoned, caring, sensitive choices and decisions. And yet on the other hand, looking back, we can then see that we, in the midst of all that care, all that thought, in the midst of all that prayer, looking back, we can see that somehow we missed the jewel that was right there in front of us all along. It is indeed enough to make our hearts ache. It's enough and sometimes to make our hearts break. Which is exactly why Jesus is so concerned about hearts. Which is exactly why Jesus is so concerned about our hearts and about his own heart. There's an ancient story about a person who was later to become a, a great rabbi, a man named Mordecai. Much like parents today, the parents of Mordecai had a problem with him. Mordecai didn't like to study. He didn't like to read the Holy Scriptures, the Torah. He didn't like to learn those words and those traditions, those sacred writings that revealed things about God to him then as is still true. So after trying everything they could think of, his parents eventually took Mordecai to their rabbi and left him with their rabbi, with that old man. Once the parents had left, the old rabbi invited Mordecai to, to lean against him so that Mordecai could literally put his heart, I'm sorry, put his ear up against him the old rabbi's chest. Put your head on my chest. And Mordecai did that. And he stayed there for some time, leaning against the old rabbi and his ear up against his chest, just listening to the beating of that old rabbi's heart. And the next day, the parents came back, picked Mordecai up and took him home from that day forward, Mordecai faithfully studied the Torah. Years later, after he himself had become a rabbi, somebody asked Mordecai how he had ever come to love God so much. And his answer was, well, he said, when I was a little boy, the old rabbi of Carlin taught me the meaning of God's word. Because you see, Mordecai had been taught from the heart, heart to heart. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus is concerned about hearts. Jesus is, is concerned about our hearts. Jesus is always concerned about our hearts, especially when our hearts are aching, especially when our hearts are breaking about things that we missed or at least think that we missed in our lives or in the lives of our loved ones, our sons and daughters or mothers or fathers or even at times things that we think have been missed in the lives even of our congregation. It's a reminder of that, that old gospel hymn that says there is a place of 
quiet rest. You know how it finishes? Near to the heart of God. And that's still exactly where Jesus seeks to draw us, especially when our own hearts are aching, especially when our own hearts are breaking, because it's, it's there, near to the heart of God, that we discover deeper meaning about our own lives, about our own faith, about our own relationships. It's there, near to the heart of God, that we discover deeper meaning in our own hearts. It's there, near to the heart of God, that we discover that literally, that literally at the heart of everything, we can always find God's love and grace and mercy. Which is why Jesus is always seeking to draw us exactly to that place. Which is why that's exactly why Jesus still seeks to draw us to that place today. Near to the heart of God. So that in the midst of all the things that we wrestle with, so in the midst of all the things that we think we have wrestled with and yet failed at, so that we can find peace, so that we can find our own hearts renewed again, so that we can somehow forgive ourselves for those things that looking back we can see that we missed, so that we can make new decisions and new choices about the futures that lie in front of each and one of us, which is why Jesus still today seeks to draw us near to the heart of God near to the heart of God, always and forever, so that we can be touched by the heart of God and so that our hearts 